Hey folks, this is Jake with Seattle Coffee Gear, and today we're going to be getting back to the basics with some tips and tricks on how to brew a better cup of drip coffee. Now, drip coffee, as simple as it may seem, you know, there are lots of ways that you can get better tasting coffee, less bitter coffee if that's what you're running into, more flavorful coffee, and just a better overall experience when you're drinking your morning cup or your afternoon cup. Now, we have, there's lots of drip brewers out in the market. There's tons, you know, available, whether they're at your local department store, Seattle Coffee Gear, or, you know, even at, you know, home appliance stores and home repair centers. Um, they tend to have some coffee makers as well. They're, they're basically everywhere. But what I would recommend and what we would recommend is getting a brewer that has an SCAA certification. Now, that means that it is certified to brew within the 195 to 205 temperature range and within the four to eight minute, uh, approximately four to eight minute time range for a full batch. Now, everything that SCG sells is Gold Cup or SCA certified. Some brands are not SCA certified, but they are independently verified, you know, whether with their own reports or um, with their own data. So just make sure that you're looking for something that can get temperature stability because that's really important when you're brewing. Otherwise, you're going to end up with uh, either an under extracted, over extracted pot, and that's never a great thing. So, first things first, just look for a, a solid brand. You know, it doesn't have to be as expensive as a Techniform or a Precision Brewer. These are two of our recommendations for kind of the last brewer you'll ever need to buy. Um, but, you know, there's, there's lots of options out there. Look for that SCA Gold Cup logo or certification. Uh, if you can, or just find something that has really good reviews or something like that on temperature stability and um, making sure that you're getting a pot of coffee out, not too quick and not too slow. Four to eight minutes, we call that the kind of the Goldilocks window right there. Now, number two is going to be um, something pretty simple, but it's something that a lot of people overlook. And it's actually going to be the water that is going into your tank. Now, here in the Pacific Northwest, we're, we're pretty blessed with good quality tap water. Um, not, not necessarily good quality, but you know, good for coffee brewing in terms of the mineral content, the hardness, and things like that. The tap water tends to taste pretty good just right out of the tap in a glass. Um, but if your tap water doesn't, then that would also mean that your coffee is going to impart that flavor because when you're getting 97 to 98% water in your cup of coffee and only 2% or so of dissolved solids, then, you know, the water is super, super important. If you don't like the taste of your water and you, you know, if, if you want to drink a cup of your water out of the tap, get something like a, a pitcher filter or an on-sink filter if you can. You know, bottled water is a, is a great alternative that we suggest for espresso machines if your water quality is not great. But for drip brewing, it's a lot less practical to have bottled water service for that um, because you're using so much more water. So a water pitcher or something like that would be great. And if you have super hard water, make sure that you um, have something that has a little bit of softening capability. That will help a lot with getting the right extraction. But no, don't use anything like distilled water or um, you know purified distilled water, basically. Um, something with no mineral content, no sodium content, things like that. That is not gonna make a very good cup of coffee. It's gonna be flat there's going to be less extraction because the minerals in that water are also helping to extract some of those volatile compounds that are found in those ground coffee beans. You know, they get some of the oils, some of the flavors out. Otherwise, your cup of coffee, if you're using distilled water, is going to be pretty flat. So use something that you'd like to drink, something that tastes good, um, and you should be all good to go there. Number three is going to be the beans. Now, I know a lot of folks are, are used to buying you know, pre-ground in the tub or pre-ground in the bag for the sake of convenience. And that's totally fine. But if you're looking to improve your coffee game and you want to improve the taste of your morning drip brew, one of the biggest things that you can do is switch from pre-ground to whole bean and invest in something like a, a burr grinder, like this Solus Scala Zero or this Oxo Barista coffee grinder. You know, both of these um, are relatively affordable. They'll last you a very long time. And it's one of the most noticeable things you can do is switching from whole bean or from pre-ground to whole bean. And that way you can adjust it, you know, you can adjust your settings as you'd like. Do you find that coarser and finer or finer is better for you? Does it taste better? You know, it gives you all that flexibility to adjust 
not just how much coffee you're putting in, but also the grind size and some of the more contributing factors for that. And then number four, uh, a big thing is gonna be consistency. Now I have a scale here, I have a Hario drip scale, but you can use any kitchen scale you like. Now what we recommend here at Seattle Coffee Gear is about a ratio of 16 grams of water to one gram of coffee, ground coffee for a drip brew. Now, if you don't have a scale, you know, that's, that's totally fine because the estimate is that for every six ounces of water, um, which is one cup in the kind of in the drip brewing coffee world, I know it's not the eight fluid ounces we're used to, but five to six ounces is what is typically used on, you know, these markings here. You can see 20 ounces is four cups. Um, 40 ounces is eight cups, 60 ounces is 12 cups, etc. So Breville's using five ounces to the cup. So does Technoform. Uh, it's going by liters here instead of uh, ounces, but same, same idea. Um, but consistency is gonna be key. So one tablespoon of coffee per five ounces of water or measure it and um, you know measure your first batch of ground coffee to the number of uh, ounces of water that you're doing in your batch. So if you're making a full pot, usually that's, you know, 40 to 60 ounces, depending on your brewer. But, um, you know, once you get the, the scale down and you can kind of visualize exactly how much, you can always measure that with a tablespoon and just use that many tablespoons moving forward. That's what I do at home. I don't weigh my coffee every single time. I just know that for my precision brewer at home, I'm using approximately seven tablespoons for the coffee and grind that I have. Um, those are the those are the big things. Now there's there's lots of other things that you can do to um, you know little things that you can do to improve your coffee. One, use good quality filters, um, coffee filters. There are some cheaper options out on the market, and those do work fine. But for example, Technoform makes a really solid cone filter that works both in this Breville and Technoform and any other number fours um, cone filters. And I find that the coffee is cleaner when it comes out of a filter. Um, by Technoform. Uh, Melita makes some really great drip brew filters as well. Um, those are just a couple brands that we can recommend, but you know, just make sure you're getting something um, good quality, um, bleached or unbleached, that's totally up to you and how you feel about that. Um, I tend to find that unbleached works better for me at home, but you know, there's nothing wrong with like an oxygen bleached or cl even chlorine bleached, which is less common nowadays, um, coffee filter. But if you do improve your coffee filter, you know, it's just gonna help you get a cleaner cup of coffee. And then the other thing that will be really helpful is, as you can see, both these drip brewers are glass craft models, which means they both have heating plates. Now, when, you know, say you've, had, you've been in the office before and you've had coffee that just tastes so bad, but you drink it anyways, right? Because it's the only thing that's available. It's the only caffeine kickstart that you have. I bet the reason, or probably a very likely reason why your coffee is tasting burnt and bitter and awful, you know, 30 minutes after, is because of a hot plate. It's pretty common that the coffee, you know, if you leave like a half a pot or less in, on a hot plate, that it can become burnt, extra bitter. You're basically recooking that coffee constantly. So if you are gonna use a glass carafe option, I would say brew as much coffee as you think you'll need within the hour or so, you know, don't let it sit for more than an hour. You know, they say two hours, it can keep it warm, but are you better off brewing another fresh batch, you know, after that hour, hour and a half mark? Um, I would say so, you don't have to, but you know, I would say that it's a, a good thing to brew less so that the pot is not sitting on that burner for, for a couple of hours, cause that will degrade the quality of your coffee. And then inversely, you can use a thermal carafe to avoid that altogether. Um, one of the downsides of thermal crafts is that oftentimes, you know, if you're pouring an hour or so after the, the cup of coffee or the batch of coffee was made, then it's going to be cooler than what was on a hot plate. Some people really like their coffee piping hot. And if you do, I think the glass craft option is going to be the only thing that will work for you. No thermal craft can really provide that freshly brewed heat and temperature like a hot plate can, but just be sure to watch it and make sure that it's not burning. Um, and you can definitely taste when it starts to burn. So, you know, if, you're, if your brewer burns after an hour, maybe leave it on a little less. Um, and, you know, when you're down to that last cup, 
and you want another batch, you're totally welcome to do that if you're brewing less than a full batch. So those are the those are kind of the big things, you know, making sure that you're using a good quality brewer, good quality water that you're wanting to drink that's not distilled and also not too hard, using whole beans and getting yourself a burr grinder. Um, you know, there's lots of options for burr grinders, entry level burr grinders on the market. Do your research, find the one that you think works best for you. You know, always ask us questions about um, our burr grinder selection because we're happy to help out there. And then get yourself a scale or at least a scoop, something that's not just eyeballing it into the into the basket because at the end of the day, you're not gonna really know what went wrong or why your coffee's tasting bad if you're not knowing you know how much coffee is going in there and being consistent with that. Because then, once you're consistent with that, you can play with grind size, and things like that to adjust less bitter, more bitter, less body, more body, things like that. And then good quality filters, just good quality components all the way around is gonna be the number one way that you're gonna get the best cup of drip coffee. And then at the end of the day, you know, if that 16 to one ratio isn't tasting right to you, that's, that's totally reasonable because some people like their coffee stronger, some people like it weaker, um, but as long as you know how you're getting to that cup of drip coffee, you know, that you really love and that you're making at home consistently, then you can do that over and over every morning as you make your morning batch. And it just makes it that much easier. And one last thing you need to worry about is seven scoops, this temperature, you know, this much water, super easy, set it and forget it. And um, you'll be making a great cup of coffee and doing it every single morning consistently. And I think that's a, that's a really good thing. So I just want to thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Okay.